the Browning 303 caliber machine gun was the mainstay RAF bomber armament in late 1942. The RAF conducted trials where various components of a captured ME109 were struck by 303 caliber bullets to determine the percentage of rounds which caused an immediate disabling hit. The intent of this video is to review the results of that study and address what part of the ME109 should an RAF Lancaster bomber gunner target. The results were somewhat surprising. This image shows the exposed target locations of an attacking ME-109. This includes the radiators, oil cooler, engine, and the pilot's body behind the engine, and his head behind the bullet-resistant windscreen. Only one of these components is vulnerable to the 303 bullet, which would cause an attack breakaway. A bomber's defensive firepower was optimized when minimized, as described in this 1945 U.S. Strategic Bombing Survey report titled Armaments in the Air War, 1939-1945. The defensive armaments are minimized as their inclusion reduces the bomber's performance. Armaments and associated bomber gunners increase the bomber's weight and drag. This will decrease the bomber's range, maneuverability, and bomb load. A bomber's goal was to deliver the maximum range and bomb load while possessing adequate defensive firepower. This chart lists the three goals of bomber gunners from a 1946 National Defense Research Committee document on World War II aerial combat topics. In order, keep your own aircraft from being shot down, keep other bombers in the formation from being shot down, and lastly, shoot down enemy fighters. So, the bomber gunner's main goal is to get the fighter to immediately break off the attack. When a fighter attacks a bomber, he will be targeting the bomber in a pursuit curve around 95% of the time. This page shows a fighter flying a pursuit curve attacking the bomber from the side from a 1944 bomber gunnery crew manual. The fighter aims ahead of the bomber, accounting for the proper lead. These are difficult shots since the fighter pilot and the bomber gunners initially account for large leads and deflections, respectively. This page shows a path of a fighter attacking a bomber from the 9 o'clock level direction. The key takeaway is the fighter's exposed area is always head-on. U.S. bomber gunners were trained to only open fire on fighters attacking in a pursuit curve and within a 600-yard range, as described in this 1943 bomber gunner manual. The ME-109s highlighted are the only ones flying a pursuit curve and inside the 600-yard effective range. This ME-109 is within the effective range but not flying an attacking pursuit curve. Hold your fire. This image shows the armaments, armor, and vulnerable components of the ME-109. The vulnerable areas are the oil cooler, radiators, engine, pilot, fuel tanks, oxygen cylinders. The oxygen cylinder, self-sealing fuel tank, and pilot's body are all shielded from head-on bullet strikes by the fighter's engine cowling, engine, guns, instrument panel, ammo belt, chutes, and boxes. The pilot's head is protected from head-on bullet strikes by a 2.25-inch thick bullet-resistant windscreen, like seen in this image, and installed in the ME-109's windscreen framing. The windscreen is roughly 45 degrees from the vertical, as seen in this image from a 1944 Air Ministry document on German aircraft vulnerabilities. The fighter's DB-601 inverted V-12 engine is highlighted here and the fighter with the nose cowl removed. The nose gun, ammo belt, chutes, and boxes. The ME-109's instrument panel. This page describes the purpose of an RAF bomber gunner from a 1942 Air Ministry bomber armament study. Fighters attacking bombers can break off the attack by either pilot incapacitation, damage the bullet-resistant windscreen, which reduces the pilot's vision, or inflicting immediate lethal plane structural systems or engine damage. This image shows the effect of a bullet strike on a B-24's 2.25-inch thick bullet-resistant tail gunner's window. The window cracks and shatters, however, the bullet did not penetrate the glass. The crewman will be unhurt, but his visibility through the windscreen is compromised. This 1942 Air Ministry Appendix A document summarizes the damaging effects of the 303 and 50 caliber bullets and the 20mm cannon projectiles fired at a head-on section of an ME-109. This clip shows the relative size differences of the 303 caliber cartridge, the 50 caliber cartridge, and the German 20 mm high explosive cannon cartridge for reference. The 303 is characterized as a rifle size caliber cartridge. The projectiles were fired from a distance of 200 yards. The damage was assessed after each shot. Immediate damage is defined as damage causing immediate breakaway of a fighter attack. This could be due to lethal aircraft or engine damage, incapacitation of the pilot, or pilot losing vision by bullet-resistant windscreen cracking or shattering. Delayed damage occurs if the effect of the strike is time-delayed after the attack. 
This may be due to a damaged radiator or other vital engine systems. This page from a 1943 A36 evaluation report indicates the Mustang's liquid-cooled engine will stop working after two or three minutes if the cooling system is damaged. This table lists the vulnerability of the ME109E model to head-on strikes. The columns are the plane's frontal area location, zone area size in square feet, type of damage, percentage of hits in that zone that are effective, striking projectile size subcolumns, and row annotation notes on the data. We will focus on the 303 caliber armor piercing round. 100% of the 303 armor piercing bullet strikes on the pilot's 2.25 inch thick, half square foot size bullet resistant windscreen causes damage where the pilot's forward vision is compromised. The pilot will break off the attack, however, he is uninjured. 0.7% of the 303 armor piercing bullet strikes on the ME 109's 9 square foot engine head on zone would ricochet off the engine into the windscreen, again causing damage and loss of pilot vision. 1% of the 303 armor piercing bullet engine zone strikes will injure the pilot. This is likely due to the bullet passing above the engine and guns but below the bullet resistant windscreen, like the zone shaded in this image and in this image. The bullet will pass through the instrument panel and strike the pilot. The ME109's engines are immune from the 303 armor piercing bullet strikes that will cause immediate engine shutdown. That's not the case for the armor piercing 50 caliber or 20 millimeter projectiles. 100% of the 303 armor piercing strikes will cause delayed damage if the one and a half square foot frontal area exposed radiator is struck. Delayed damage will not stop the fighter from pressing home the attack. If firing at the ME-109's entire 31 square foot frontal area, 2.3% of these hits would cause an immediate fighter breakaway by loss of vision or incapacitation of the pilot. Based on this data, the RAF bomber gunner should aim at this shaded zone here. It's the only vulnerable area which would cause the fighter to immediately stop the attack. This page outlines discussion points regarding RAF bomber armaments and provides some thoughts on tactics. A bomber must be armed enough to fight its way to and from the target. If a fighter breaks off their attack, then this goal has been achieved. Daylight attacks occur while the formation is taking advantage of the mutual protective fire of the combat box. Bombers flying singly at night will rely on evasive tactics and their machine guns if under attack. A bomber gunner must be able to stop a fighter by inflicting sufficient head-on damage. ME-109s are invulnerable to head-on attacks from the 303 armor-piercing rounds, except for shattering the windscreen. The windscreen is only 2% of the fighter's frontal area. Only 2% of the 303 armor-piercing bullet strikes on the fighter's frontal area will cause an immediate breakaway. This value increases to 6% if the bullet strikes are 50 caliber armor-piercing. 50 caliber armor-piercing strikes are three times more likely than 303 armor-piercing strikes to cause an ME-109 to terminate its attack. The report goes on, at the start of the war, RAF bombers were equipped with 303 gun-powered turrets, which were the best bomber armaments of the world. This was countered by German fighters adopting self-sealing fuel tanks, bullet-resistant windscreens, and armor, which rendered them relatively immune from the 303 small arms fire. Key channel takeaways. As a bomber gunner, always aim for the attacking fighter's vulnerable region, which gives the highest probability of an immediate lethal strike, not a delayed lethal strike. A 303 armed Lancaster bomber gunner should target the bullet resistant windscreen to get an immediate lethal strike. Don't aim at the fighter's engine, radiator, oil coolers, or any other part of the fighter. 50 caliber armor piercing strikes are three times more likely than 303 strikes to cause an ME-109 to terminate its attack. If you found this ME-109 head-on vulnerability to the 303 cartridge evaluation review interesting, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.